of Reinhardt College in Waleska, Georgia, this is Renewing American Civilization. In this, the fifth of ten class presentations, Congressman Newt Gingrich, an adjunct professor at Reinhardt College, will continue his course, which presents the foundational principles necessary to the renewal of American civilization. This week's lesson, Pillar 4, The Spirit of Invention and Discovery, focuses on the spirit of invention and discovery and the development of pragmatism and practical common sense as key characteristics of and contributors to American civilization. Let me uh, welcome everyone this morning. Let me in particular uh, welcome the students of Mind Extension University. And I want to remind everyone that uh, you can mail your comments to Renewing American Civilization, Post Office Box 6008, Marietta, Georgia 30065. Or, if you prefer, you can fax your comments to 404-528-9806. Or you can email your comments uh, to America Online, which is at uh, renew at aol.com. Uh, in addition, for those of you who uh, want to get the class transcripts and other class materials, and I should mention that uh, this is available on the internet uh, web page, http uh, double slash www.p period uh, pff period org. But if you, if you check in, we automatically give you permission to reproduce it. And I say that because one of the uh, internet memos we got, or email memos we got this week, was from somebody who has a totally different bulletin board in a totally different place who was asking could he take all the transcripts off of internet uh, and put them on their particular bulletin board and the answer is yes. We, uh, we copyright so nobody can copyright it. That is, we wouldn't like to wake up Thursday morning and have somebody who had copyrighted the whole course and I couldn't use it. So we copyright it only for protective reasons but in fact uh, we encourage people to reproduce these things. Now let me also remind folks that uh, a lot of the ideas in the course are carried out you can get either the American Civilization newspaper, the video or audio tape of the course, and the course readings by calling 1-800-2-RENEW, which is, uh, for most Americans, still easier than uh, figuring out how to get on Internet, although the number of getting on Internet is going up all the time. The, the <coughs> framework of this course starts with the premise that America is a unique civilization that has five pillars. <coughs> the historic lessons of American civilization, personal strength, entrepreneurial free enterprise, the spirit of invention and discovery, and quality as defined by Deming. And that as we go through these five pillars that define how American civilization works and study them, we will then, after we spend two hours in each of those, apply them to four areas. And the four areas to which we will apply these pillars are one, the third wave and how it will affect American civilization. Two, creating American jobs in the world market. Three, replacing the culture of violence and poverty with a culture of productivity and safety. And four, citizenship and community in the 21st century. Now, today's topic is the spirit of invention and discovery, which is pillar number four. And we're going to talk a lot about the spirit of invention and discovery, but I can't resist since just before uh, the class started here at Reinhardt, I was asking you all, you know, I've been talking a lot about Peter Drucker's The Effective Executive, why you should buy it, why you should use it, uh, for anybody who's watching us for the first time, this is what this is Drucker's, The Effective Executive. It's available in paperback. It is, uh, I believe, the best single volume in being effective ever written. I think as you all begin to encounter it, you're having the same effect. One of Drucker's points is that effective executives monitor their own time. That they actually, by 15-minute increments, will record how they spend time just to find out what are they really doing with their time. How many of you uh, did that over the last week? Okay, almost half of you. What, what was your big learning? What, what did you learn from doing that? I have a lot more time than I thought. You have a lot more time than you thought. Who else? I didn't spend the time where I actually thought that I had spent it. Uh, what was the difference? I think the big difference was I wasn't able to uh, focus on the priorities that I thought that I was uh, focusing on. I need to refocus my priorities. Who else? I spent a lot of time in the car and I found that by planning on doing things like taking tapes or taking my recorder or whatever, I can utilize that time rather than just being dead time. Okay. I find that the telephone is, is uh, interrupting and sidetracking me into other areas that I need to be not so involved on to keep focused on what I've got to accomplish. Who else? 
I found that if I wrote it down, that I stuck by it. If I if I had it on paper, then I'd actually do what I was planning on doing. Yeah, but you know, if you planned it in advance, if you planned it like the night before, if you planned it out in 15-minute increments, you got a lot more done the next day. Yeah. But it's hard to stick to that 15-minute increment when things come up in the middle of the day and you go, oh my yeah. gosh, I have to take care of this and this and that sets your whole schedule. Now, well, now let me ask you something. If, if you found, as you kept track of your schedule, that that was happening to you every day, what would you do? <coughs> Plan in time. To right. You start saying, okay, I really know that I'm going to spend two hours every day doing things I didn't plan on, so I will block in two hours every day. Because part of the message is, you have a finite amount of time. And so, and you're going to lose a fair amount of that time because things will come up you can't avoid. So you have even less time than you thought you had. So you better really decide what are my highest priorities. And that's what you do during the time you have available. And then gradually you'll get into the habit as, as I am today. You know, I now plan my schedule on, on an annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, and sometimes hourly basis. And I'll redesign my schedule three or four times a day and stop and say, we got to change this, change this, re-add this, move this. And the result is you're constantly coming back to first priorities. What are the things you have to get done? And uh, Drucker has a rule that uh, you get 80% done in 20% of the time. Yeah. And then the, other, the rest of the time you spend finishing it. And so his theory is if you get 80 done and then you shift and you get 80 done, remember 580s is 400. So in the length of time it only takes a person to complete the first 100% under the Drucker model, you do, you, you're consistently dropping the 20% that's least important. So you're actually getting four times as much done. Do, do you all follow me? Yeah. And if you then set priorities so that you're actually focusing each time on the most important priorities. It is amazing how it changes your effectiveness. So anyway, so I'm, I'm glad to see that at least half of you now are up to speed. The rest of you, ought, everybody ought to, just for a few days, track your time for 15-minute increments and then look at what you thought you were doing and look at what you're actually doing. And I think you'll all be very surprised. And if you get in that habit, and then, and then the rest of Drucker's effective executive works just as well. That is, if you take each of the ideas and actually do it, apply it to your life. Don't just go, that's interesting. Apply it to your life. You'll be shocked a year from now how much more effective you are. Now, for today, though, we're going to talk about the spirit of invention and discovery. And we deliberately talked about it as a spirit because it's not how to be a scientist or how to be an engineer or how to be an inventor. It's an attitude. It's a way of thinking about things. It's an approach to life that emphasizes inventing and discovering. And in a way, I think that America is uniquely committed to this because the pioneering spirit led to the spirit of invention and discovery. Remember, pioneering occurs first in your mind. Very important concept, that what you have is a pioneer of the mind. You think about going west. You think about going to the mountains. You think about uh, reaching the Pacific Ocean. Lewis and Clark started by visioning in their own head the idea of an expedition to the Pacific. You thought about creating a wagon train. So, it's something you'll see again when we come to Deming next week, that the, the father of the quality movement talks about the idea that first there has to be a theory. You know, your theory may be, if I put water on the stove in a pan and I turn the stove on and the water bubbles and I take an egg out of the cold thing called a refrigerator and I put it now on the hot thing called a stove and I let it wait three minutes, it will cook. That's a theory you have of how eggs get cooked. 